Hello. In this brief lecture, we're going to start talking about some different kinds of tissues. So from cells to tissues to organs. Um, cells are the basic living structural and functional unit of your body. So all of the anatomical structures um, and uh, organs and uh, things that we talk about in this course are made of cells. Tissues are groups of cells that have a common embryonic origin and a common function, like muscle cells. Um, you think of muscle cells all working together to form a muscle, which then has the function of moving your skeletal uh, components. Organs, um, think of like kidney or liver, um, are functional units of the body that consist of, a different, of groups of different kinds of tissues. So the general structure of your organs are that there'll be a stroma or some supporting connective tissue that holds the organ together. And then the parenchyma is a term used for the functional um, tissues of that organ. So say your liver has um, reticular from, um, fibers that, that hold the liver uh, hepatocytes together. And then the hepatocytes are the cells within the liver that actually do the work of the liver. In this little mini lecture, I want to introduce you to uh, epithelium and connective tissues. So there are four basic uh, tissue types within the body. There's epithelium, connective tissue, muscle, and that has some subdivisions, some skeletal muscles, smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, um, and nervous tissue. So muscle and nervous tissue, you'll hear more about in the uh, neural blocks and the musculoskeletal blocks, but I want to introduce you to epithelium and connective tissue so that you can understand and have a basically a scaffold to um, understand um, some of the organ systems that you'll be learning about later. Epithelium is pretty cool. It forms membranes um, and, tight, and sheets of cells that are tightly uh, connected. So very tightly knit together and stuck together with, um, with tight junctions. I'll turn on my drawing tool. Uh, and you can kind of see how close the cells are together here. So the superficial part of the cell is called the apex or the apical portion of the cell and the part of the cell that is um, attached to a basement membrane is uh, the basal surface of the cell. Epithelium, um, epithelia for plural, are not vascularized. Okay, so the um, blood vessels, pictured kind of here, do not go across this basement membrane, the basement membrane to which the cells are anchored. So everything that, um, all of the oxygen and nutrients that um, feed the epithelium have to diffuse um, out of the capillary beds and up through that basement membrane into the, the uh, epithelial cells. Epithelium divides, um, and most of it divides pretty rapidly. When we talk about getting your beauty sleep, it's because your cell division in your epithelia of your skin uh, at, happens mostly at night when you're sleeping. And so, that renewal of your skin occurs um, overnight. Internally, the um, epithelium will line things like your blood vessels. So if this were a blood vessel, you'd have the lumen, which is a fancy word for hole or space, and you'd have it lined by an epithelium. And again, it's avascular. They're, they're uh, anchored to the basement membrane, but uh, things uh, nutrients have to diffuse. So externally, it forms the epidermis of your skin. And you will hear about different kinds of epithelia uh, throughout the different, uh, the different blocks when you're talking about different organ systems. Okay, mouse. You think, oh, erase. You think that after all of this time, I'd be better at this. <laughs> so the functions of epithelium in order of priority are protection, and a big example is your skin, which is actually the largest organ of your body. Um, secretion, all of your glands, um, your endocrine and exocrine glands are made up of epithelium. Absorption, the gastrointestinal tract, all of the your gut lining uh, is 
modified epithelium that's really good at absorbing nutrients out of the food you eat. And another uh, aspect of epithelium is filtration. Your kidneys are made of, uh, the functional units of your kidneys are made of uh, epithelium that help uh, filter uh, stuff that you want to get rid of out of your blood. Okay, why is it not advancing? Okie dokie. Oh, that's because I'm still not going to go back to my mouse. Sorry, guys. So the way we classify epithelium is by uh, two things. First, it's uh, shape and then by the number of the layers. So the shape is described here in that you can see how this, uh, this uh, the squamous is kind of flat. So squamous, flat, um, flat, skinny cells. Cuboidal is exactly what it sounds like. They are little cubes. And columnar are tall, okay, like columns. And again, all three are anchored to a basement membrane. Layers. If you're simple, you only have one layer. So simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar. And if you're stratified, you have more than one layer. Stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal, stratified columnar. And they are named for these, uh, the shape of the layer on the surface. Okay, so being this being the basement membrane and this being the top, so bottom, top, that top layer is the shape for which the epithelium is named. We have a couple more uh, types of epithelium that are interesting. There's something called pseudostratified columnar epithelium. And it's columnar. You can see how the cells are tall, but the nuclei are in different places, right? So when they first looked at this, they thought that this cell stopped here, and that this cell started here and start, stopped here, that this cell uh, stopped maybe around, somewhere around in here. What they didn't understand is that it's just about the cell shape. So they're all anchored to the basement membrane. Some of them reach all the way to the top. Some of them don't quite. Um, but, and their nuclei are on all these different levels. So they thought that it wasn't... They thought it was stratified, but it isn't really. So it's pseudo stratified. There's another kind of epithelium that's pretty cool called transitional epithelium. And this lines your bladder. And it's really quite clever. The surface layer of transitional epithelium is kind of dome shaped. And I've tried to kind of illustrate it here with these domes. And this is what it looks like when the bladder is empty and a little more um, small, shrunk. When the bladder fills, it has to stretch. And in order to do that, if these guys were just typical epithelium and stuck together really tightly like they all are, and this stretched, it would pull these cells apart. And that would be bad because then urine could get from the, the uh, cavity of the, of the bladder into the tissue itself. So these cells have this unique feature in that when the bladder stretches, this epithelium stretches, the cells become more stretched out, less, um, less curved and a little flatter. And this allows your bladder uh, lining to stretch and flatten with bladder filling. And then, um, and the result of that is that you don't have uh, tissue damage as the bladder fills. So that's it for epithelium. In order to be ready for your quiz and for your uh, eventual exam, you need to know what the four basic tissue types are. You need to know what factors are used to classify the different epithelias or epitheliums, epithelia. Um, you need to know whether they're vascular or, afat, or vascular or avascular and do epithelial cells divide. Thank you for your attention.